Today's it's lesson. Who knows what today's lesson is? Go ahead and shout it out. Prophet to Judah. Now, again, you remember two kingdoms. What were the two kingdoms? Josiah. Israel? What's the other one? Um, it's right up there. Oh, Judah. Judah. Matthias, <laughs> since you know so much, <laughs> is Israel the northern or southern kingdom? Israel? Yeah. Northern. northern. Is he right? Yeah. Anybody who thinks that Matthias is right, yeah. raise your hand. Anybody who thinks that Matthias is wrong, go... <laughs> no, Matthias is right. So, Matthias, if Israel is the northern kingdom, what's Judah? Southern. Southern. You're smarter than you look. Smarter than you look. You're saying that he's not smart? I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I call on for the next question? Me. Me. Xander? Oh. Your hand went up. <laughs> Did Israel have good kings or bad kings? Kings like Xander said, go. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, Eric? Did Israel have any good kings? No. What? Had all wicked kings, right? Taylor, what do you think? How about Judah? Do you think Judah had any good kings? Yeah. Is your name Taylor? Taylor. Let me, let, me, let me just tell you this. Taylor is a lot better looking than you. Seriously. 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 What do you think, Taylor? You're right. You're absolutely right. Judah had some good kings, and Judah had some bad kings. Now, here's the problem, though. Sometimes the kings were good, but the people weren't. See... Let me, let me think about, let me, let me tell it to you this way. You see, my dad, my dad was a preacher. But, you know, my dad was a pretty good guy. He, he, preached, he preached the Word of God just like uh, Pastor Greg does. My dad was a pastor. But you see, some of us, I had, I had uh, three sisters and, two, and one brother. Now, I have two sisters and one brother, but I used to have three. But... Some of them served God, and some of them didn't. My older sister and myself, we always served God. My next younger sister didn't serve God in high school. She did all the bad things. Even though my dad was a good guy, my sister did bad things. But when she went to college, she woke up and said, whoa, what am I doing? This isn't good. Now she serves God. My brother didn't wake up. My brother decided he didn't want to serve God. So even though my dad was a, even though my dad was a preacher, my brother wanted nothing to do with God. Until one day something terrible happened to my brother. And it shook him up. And he decided, you know what? I need to stop messing around. And I need to serve God. And then my youngest sister, she, we weren't sure. We weren't sure. And it wasn't until after we died, after she died, that we realized that, yes, she did love God. She wasn't the best person, but you know what? She loved God. 
and I believe she's in heaven right now. But sometimes the kings were good. Sometimes the kings were bad. This is in Judah. Israel never had a good king. God judged them. But Judah, they had good kings, but sometimes the people weren't that good. Now, Judah had just seen the death of king, a king by the name of Uzziah. That's a weird name, huh? Isn't that a weird name, Uzziah? Can you imagine his mom? Hey, Uzziah, get over here. Uzziah, what are you doing? It's sort of like she's saying, it's fun use my eye. Use my eye, yeah. Or is it? Where, where I'm from in Pennsylvania, it's when they say one person, you, and when they say more than one person's use. Uzziah. Use, use guys. Use guys, get over here. You more than one person. Yep, more than one. One is you, and more than one is use. Don't tell your ELA teachers that. Do not, I will. Do not tell your ELA teachers that. Why are you telling us that's why I'm in summer? Yeah. That's right. Say you're not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because some, some students aren't in summer yet. Lizzie's still in school. Oh, wow. oh. Yep. Yeah. All right. Now, Uzziah had been the king for 52 years. Let's not. Let's not. Uzziah had been the king for 52 years. That's a long time. Was he the king when he was still a baby? He started when he was a teenager. He was a teenager when he started as a king. He was 16 years old. Oh my God. And, yeah, yeah. They had kings as young as eight. Uh, no. King David. No, I'm talking about like King, King, David. King Josiah. King David. King Josiah was eight years old. Josiah? Uh, yes, Josiah. That's your name. That's the name of a, that was the name of a king. Are you eight? Not yet. He's still six. He ain't old enough to be king yet. Well, I'm nine. I was in first grade. You're close, right? Yeah, I'm in first grade. All right, listen. So King Uzziah, he had been mostly a good king, but he didn't do everything right, and he got he got proud. He got really proud. You know, hey, I'm, I'm a good king here. I'm a, I'm a good king. And what happens is when you get proud, you get in trouble. What? You do. You get in trouble. When you get too proud, you get in trouble. When you think you're bigger than God, you're going to get in trouble. But see, the king was obeying God, but the people weren't. And so God sent Isaiah, the prophet, to warn the people of Judah. So, Who wants to read? Go ahead and go find Isaiah chapter 6. Those of you who have your Bibles, find Isaiah chapter 6. Do you want to read? No? Okay. You don't have to read. I want to read. Find Isaiah chapter 6. That's not how you do your Bible. That's not how you treat the Bible. You want to read? That is it. You got it. Start with verse 1. Read for me verses 1 and 2, please. It was in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord who was sitting on a lofty. Lofty? Okay. And the train of his robe filled the temple, attending him with a mighty. Would you like to leave it there? Or it? Yep, just 1 and 2. Okay. So. Uh, let's see, so the train of Israel filled the temple, and read verse 2 also. Above it stood seraphim, each having six wings. Two wings, they covered their faces with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. Okay, so the seraphim, they were angels. They were angels. So all of a sudden, King. Uh, not King Uzziah. All of a sudden, Isaiah has this vision, something that he was seeing. And he saw heaven. And he saw God sitting on the throne. And seraphim, those were angels. And the angels had six wings, 
With two, they covered their faces because God would, was not supposed to be seen. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they flew. Two wings. So they had six wings. Does somebody else want to read? Kaya, read verses 3 and 4, please. Well, that's kind of hard, isn't it? Why don't, you use, why don't you use this one? Read verses 3 and 4, please. Taken away, 
and your sin has been purged, which means your sin has gone from you, which meant that he was able now to, to see God. So he wasn't afraid anymore. Isaiah knew that he should have been killed because he wasn't clean, and he lived among a people who weren't clean, but God chose to make him clean so that he was able to see God and live. But God had a message for the nation of Judah. And I'm reading on here. It says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, who shall, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I. Send me. God's pleased with us when we have that attitude. When we say, You know what, God? Whatever it is you want, whatever you want to do, I want to do it with you. Whatever you want me to do, I want to do it. God's pleased with that attitude. So he said, go, tell this people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull, their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and return and be healed. What a strange thing to tell a prophet, to tell the people. Now God wanted a volunteer to take his message to the nation of Judah. Isaiah was willing and eager to be that person. But what a sad message it was. See, even on the outside, it, although on the outside it appeared that the people were doing right, God sees their hearts. You see, you might think that you got everybody fooled. And you might think that it looks like you're doing the right thing. But God can read your heart. He knows what your heart is thinking. He knows if, if you're thinking right or wrong. Sometimes people try to fool people. They try to fool people and to make them think that they're a good person when really inside their heart they're not. God knows better. And see, God saw that insincerity in the heart of, of the people of Judah. And he was ready to judge them just like he judged Israel. So he was going to prevent them from understanding the truth when they heard it and unable to tell what the truth was, even when they saw it with their own eyes. When Isaiah asked how long this was supposed to happen, God said that it would be so until the nation was destroyed. In other words, God told Isaiah, I'm going to make this people not able to hear the truth. I'm going to make this people not able to see the truth. Oh God, how long? Until they're destroyed. That's a sad thing. That's a really sad thing for God to say. You see, God was tired of their games. He was tired of the things that they were, go that they were doing. And I'll tell you that within 150 years, the nation of Judah was also destroyed. Israel was destroyed shortly after this, but, but uh, within 150 years, Judah would also be destroyed. Now, those of you who have your Bibles, I want you to turn over to Isaiah chapter 53 now. Go to the big numbers 53. You see, when we choose to sin against God, when we choose to live a life of sin, God's going to be very patient with us. He's going to give us every chance possible to turn back to Him. But if we keep refusing, if we keep refusing to obey Him, pretty soon He's going to say enough is enough. No more. No more chances. And then judgment comes. And that's what's happened with Judah. But if there's one thing that everybody needs to know, and I want you to listen to this. I want everybody to listen to me. God loves you with all your heart. And even if he's angry with what you're doing, and he was angry with what Judah was doing, even though he might be angry with what you're doing, he still loves you. And he's never going to leave you hopeless. He's always going to leave you with something to hope in. Even though our sin separates us from God, he proves that he will take whatever measures are necessary so we can be with him. And in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, God gives us a vision of how he plans to bring us back to him 
at the expense of his own son, Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to read to you the 53rd chapter. And I want you to listen. Listen to what I'm reading. And if you hear something that sounds like Jesus, raise your hand. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He has no form or comeliness that is handsomeness. And when we see him, there's no beauty that we should, be desi uh, that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Does any of that sound like Jesus? See, that's what they said, that Jesus... You know, do you know what it means to be despised? What does it mean? Hated or disliked. Hated. Dis, intense dislike. I mean, not, not just, I don't like you. It's like, I really hate you. That's what despised means. That's what Jesus was. You see, even though Jesus did nothing wrong... They said, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And when the Bible says that they, they, uh, they whipped him, they whipped him with whips and it tore his skin and they punched him and they pulled out his beard. And when they were done beating him up, he looked awful. He looked terrible. There was no beauty. He was despised and he was rejected by men. In other words, they... They didn't care about his life. They said, crucify him. Xander, what you got to say? Didn't they jab the spear up in his heart? That was after he died, actually. That was... But yes, you're correct. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. And they called Jesus a man of sorrows because he knew why he was coming into the world. Yes, Matthias. Why did they hate why did they want him to be killed? Because they thought that Jesus was, you see, he, he was preaching different than what their tradition said. They had this thing going. It, it, was, a, it was a real, uh, you know, they, they had their religion. And you do this, and you do this, and you do this. And what happened was that the priests and the temple, the workers of the temple became very powerful. And they became very influential. They, people did what they told them to do. Even though they were corrupt in their hearts, they looked very good to people, and people respected them, and people gave them power. And Jesus upset all that because Jesus told them that what they're doing was wrong, that they need to worship God. And... What really infuriated people is he said, I am the Son of God. They said, that can't be. You can't be the Son of God. You're making yourself equal with God. Now, most of the people didn't know. They didn't know one thing from another. They knew that this guy did a lot of miracles, but they didn't know much else about him. But you see, because the priest told him, well, he's a bad man. He's a bad man. He's a bad man. He's a bad man. No, not Batman. He was a bad man. Bad? You see, you guys respect me as a teacher. And if I told you to think something, and if I told you enough times, pretty soon you'd begin to believe me, and you'd do what I tell you to do. Now, it's my responsibility to teach you the truth. Because if I teach you a lie, God's going to deal with me. God's going to deal very severely with me. So I need to teach you the truth because people tend to believe their leaders. And if you say something bad about a person enough, even though what you say is a lie, people are going to believe you. And that's what they do with Jesus. They said bad things about Jesus, and people believed them. So he was despised, and we didn't respect him. Surely he has borne our griefs and he carried our sorrows. And we thought him as stricken, smitten by God. That We said, oh, he must be cursed by God. All these things that happened to him. 
But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. In other words, all those, all those whips that he took should have gone to us. It was our sin, not his. He did it for us. This is the vision that Isaiah was given. Isaiah's talking about all this. You see, he's talking about Jesus. But Jesus hasn't appeared yet. Let me finish this up and then we'll go back. So all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. In other words, he laid on Jesus our sins. He blamed Jesus for our sins. He was oppressed and afflicted, but he didn't open his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. They accused Jesus of many things, and yet he just sat there. He didn't say anything. He could have defended himself, but he chose not to, because he knew that he was going to be the sacrifice for sin. He was taken from prison, from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. In other words, he was killed. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. They made his grave uh, with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he'd done no violence. You see, it would be another 750, almost 800 years before Jesus did all of this. And yet God showed that to Isaiah. That's why Isaiah was a prophet. God showed him what would happen in the future. Okay, I'm going to stop here because the parents are starting to come. And listen, you guys, if there's anything that you need to know, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And if you think that Jesus doesn't love you, Jesus loves you. He gave his own son for you. He loves you that much. All right, class is dismissed. And we're going to...